How long do you think these chargers have been here unused? Yep, that's right, it's been. What's the one thing that you need for electric vehicles to work? For this whole rollout to actually be successful? Infrastructure. Without infrastructure, they won't work, everything will fall flat on its face, and, well, the doubters will be proven correct. Now, if you took petrol stations away from an entire area, combustion engine wouldn't work. Much like many decades ago when they were new, it takes time for these things to roll out. Sound familiar? But the petrol engine rollout had a significant advantage over an EV rollout. There is a deadline with electric vehicles. The 2035 new car sales deadline. That's 12 and a half years ago, uh, ago away. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot can happen in 12 and a half years and it's still definitely possible to get things in place. But we are stuck, we are saddled with something which there may be no solution to. A barrier that's ultimately slowing things down to the point where even I'm getting dubious as to whether or not we can meet this 2035 deadline. That is, of course, bureaucracy, red tape, inefficiency of certain parties and just incompetence, quite frankly. Now, don't get me wrong, there are positives out there. There are people doing great work. There are good networks, there are good councils. But there's quite a lot that are doing, uh, well, a less than stellar job, shall we say. I'm going to give you a few examples of what I mean and why this is such now a significant barrier to this infrastructure rollout. Because without it, we'd probably be further ahead than we are now. And it doesn't seem like it's going away any time soon. Back in October 2021, me and Harry came here to do the EV rally. And we had good fun. And I remember thinking that these chargers are going to make it really, really easy now to charge at this place because that charger over there, which works depending on which way the wind's blowing, um, well, we're going to have three instead of one. There's redundancy. Triple the throughput. It's brilliant. And then someone told me, well, it's been here several months and they're still yet to be commissioned. So they're installed but not working yet. That was back in October 2021. So they've been here several months and that was a year and a half ago so these have been installed tens of thousands of pounds worth of equipment but not used in up to two years even the paint on the ground is fading whether it's a grid problem or a council problem a landowner problem a charge network problem because it's probably not the charge network's fault either way someone's not doing their job properly somebody's screwed up or screwing up because who knows when they'll be back up and running? And let's face it, there has to have been some public money used for these charge points that are installed in the UK. So are we wasting that too? Why would something be installed if the grid isn't ready, if that's the excuse? Why not wait until the grid's ready and then put the 50 grams worth of equipment in? Either way, there's no accountability. And I think that's what people are asking for now. Thank you, it's the train. <laughs> there's no accountability. And that is why we need something like a, an, an off-com equivalent, an off-charge, to make sure stuff like this doesn't happen. It happens more often than you think. Now I think it's time to go somewhere a little quieter again, because the steam train's about to set off. Now as I said just back then, I'm not necessarily blaming the networks on this one, and I only chose that specific site because I happened to be here on holiday and I thought that would be a good place as an example. There's another one here that someone sent me on Twitter. This has been in for, according to him anyway, two or three years still yet to be commissioned. So you got to think, how often is this actually happening? It's surely not just those two examples. In fact, I think there's an example of Tesla themselves installing something that never got up and running, I think, at a service area. So no one's immune to this and someone must be responsible. How can you physically install something until it's ready? Someone's obviously done something wrong or lied or screwed up to the point where, oh, actually, we can't put these in, at least not yet. The one I filmed outside, there's a tweet from August saying that they're waiting on a part for the grid connection. That was in August, 2022. I'd love to know what this part's made from. 
So there are clearly many players involved when it comes to a, an install. Maybe that's part of the problem. Too many chefs or not a single lead on the entire project. There are networks out there that install chargers with no hiccups. There are councils that, again, do the same sort of thing. We're going to do this, they do this, and then it works. So it's clearly easily done by lots of people, councils, companies. So why do we have so many messing up in this way? Which is very, very, very key to the whole infrastructure rollout. Again, going back to the one that I've just filmed outside, there were a queue of five cars, five cars, when I were filming that. The six Tesla superchargers next to them, well, they were pretty much in use as well. So even they need to increase the amount. So it's getting to the point where we're, 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 where we're bulging at the seams, but cars are still being sold at record levels, but infrastructure isn't getting installed at a pace that can keep up with that. Now, let me give you an example of something a bit closer to home for me. About six years ago, something like that, I asked my local council, why do we not have any chargers at all? Bear in mind, this is six years ago, so it's quite, you know, it's, it's pre sort of EVs being accepted as a mainstream sort of car. Um, and they said, well, we, 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 we're looking into it. It's something on our agenda, which is the standard response you get from any council, but we can't afford it. Now this, it's a bit of a, a, an obvious answer, but I can, I can get it, I understand that. Some councils will have other priorities. So fair enough. Went away, did some research and found several networks that would actually install charge points. And we're talking fast, expensive, rapid charging points for free. No cost to the council whatsoever. As I understand it, as long as they can have that site for an X amount of years, then that's all they need. So if it's busy enough, you get free charges. I went back to the council with the help of a local councillor, the only one on the entire council that was actually interested in this. And well, we backed them into a corner. We can't afford it. These are free. Uh, oh yeah. So they started looking into it. And eventually we got two rapid chargers installed uh, three years ago now, two, three years ago, something like that, with hopefully more to come. So if you ever visit Skipton in the main street, you're welcome. I'm gonna to toot my own horn on this one. If I hadn't have done that, they wouldn't exist, at least not yet. And did I get in the papers? No, the councillor that just happens to be in power at the time got the handshake on the newspaper. I didn't even get a mention. Not that I'm bitter at all. That aside though, how long do you think it took from then going, okay, we'll look into this, we can't really ignore free charges, to it actually being installed? How long do you think? Two and a half years. Two and a half years to go from yes to installed. Now I know they did have a little bit of an issue with getting uh, permission to cross somebody's land in terms of the grid connection had to come across somewhere. That I believe took a few months, but two and a half years? When I asked the network how long it would take from the grid saying it's fine, the council giving permission, from basically from the get go, if you went, right, let's go ahead with this. How long from install to the first charge? They said six weeks. Throughout this process, I asked several times what's going on. And I kid you not, one of the time I got the response of, well, in two or three months, it's the council elections again. So no one's doing anything for the next two or three months, especially if they don't think they're gonna get back in power because ultimately then someone else will get the uh, benefit of their project uh, and they haven't done anything for it. So essentially selfish interests is what delayed it several months. And then after the new people came in, it was another one or two months to help them settle in first. So that's nearly six months worth of delay because of... The last example. This is more of a generic broad scope thing. And I think also it's quite important when you have a go at a network for not doing something. I remember again talking to a couple of networks why things aren't getting repaired quickly. I mean, we're talking weeks or even months sometimes to, it's just insane, it should not take that long. Nothing takes that, that long to fix, especially when other networks are clearly managing to fix them very quickly. And they said, well, in a lot of circumstances, especially in council stuff, you know, council owned car parks or chargers, this is a typical thing that happens. You will have a charger that's installed by company A. It will be maintained by company B, and the network would administrate the whole thing in terms of the charge, the app, you know, it will be on their map. And the council would be the owners in this example anyway. So the charger goes wrong, there's a fault. 
the company that maintains it comes and looks at the charger and goes, right, this part's at fault, you need to replace this. And it should be under warranty. The company that they installed it said, that's not a warranty problem, that's a maintenance problem. And then it gets batted back and forth until someone agrees that it's their responsibility. If, for example, it's the responsibility of the council, the owner, the maintenance of it, you know, something gets damaged, for example, then what will happen is the maintenance company will say, this is how much it will cost to get this up and running, Mr. Council. And then they will go, we'll get that approved as soon as possible. And we all know how well that goes. So that delays things and delays things. And sometimes councils will just say, yeah, we can't afford to do this anymore. We've installed chargers using, I don't know, free grants perhaps, or when we had a bit of money. Now we can't afford to run them. So it's not gonna get repaired anytime soon. The network gets the blame because it's got their logo on it, but ultimately there's other parties involved. And I'm using councils, it could be a privately owned charger, whoever, but it's usually councils that I come across as to causing the issue. Now the financial side of it, not necessarily the fault of the council, it could be the government taking money away, redirecting it. Again, red tape, bureaucracy. If you're gonna put something in like a, a deadline for switching over to electric vehicles, you need to back it up. And I know there are other priorities in life, in the UK, in governments, but why do A if you're not gonna back it? Why, why, why say you're gonna do something and then not put what you need to help it happen. It just infuriates everybody. We can't rely just on purely public network. We need legislation. As I said earlier, we need some sort of Ofcom equivalent. So, well, regulation, I suppose you'd call it. If you had a regulatory body with certain rules and powers, then maybe this sort of thing wouldn't happen. Councils risking getting fined if they don't do something. Networks getting risking fined if they don't repair something in a set amount of time. Certain minimum standards for charge points. 50 kilowatt chargers are all right, but for me, that's old school now. It should be at least 150, ideally 300 and odd, if the grid can cope. So then the grid gets involved and, well, you see the problem. It's not impossible. What I'm saying is not Oh, you know, let's just give up on this. It's too much hard work. Let's face it. Look at the petrol combustion engine infrastructure that exists to run our cars, mine included. We have pipelines that span continents, massive container ships moving the stuff around, refineries, petrol stations, a whole infrastructure. Anything's possible. And people can make money from this. So it will happen. It's just, is it going to happen by this, again, this deadline? So there we go. They're my thoughts. They're my examples. What do you think? In fact, I want to hear if you've got any chargers or the ones that you know about in your area. Stick it in the comments below that have been installed but not actually usable yet. They're still waiting to be commissioned. How, uh, how common is this? Let, let, let's litter the comments section with examples. And feel free to put any examples of chargers that are faulty that months later are still not working. Ah, oh, I feel better now. I'm going to enjoy my holiday, hopefully. Um, but YouTube waits for no man. Thank you for watching this. Uh, please, if you want to support the channel, then click the join button next to subscribe for 99p. There is a live uh, stream for members. It's happening tonight, actually, which will be two days ago from when you see this video, or unless you're not a member, nine days... Oh, it's getting complicated again. I'll just leave it there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.